Hello, good evening. I can see that we've still got a few people um, waiting to join this webinar, webinar session on languages and travel and tourism here at Worthing College and Haywards Heath College. We're just going to leave it, say, 30 seconds so people can join in. We can see that the participants are arriving as we speak now, which is fantastic. So I'll give people a little bit of time so they can um, we'll give everybody the opportunity to join us so they won't miss out on any of the um, on any of the information. So the session today, well, this evening should be from approximately about seven o'clock to about 7.40. We're planning for the presentation to be about 30 minutes and um, then we'll do some, some Q and A, some questions at the end as well. So um, I think we're pretty much there. Maybe we should, um, we should get going, I think really now. So first of all, I'd like to give you, you know, offer you a really warm welcome um, to this virtual open evening event here for Worthing College and also for Haywards Heath College. Um, my name's Lynn McCracken and I'm one of the Deputy Heads of Learning here at Worthing College. And within my area, that includes languages and travel and tourism. So um, it's lovely to be able to welcome you. I know it's a bit different. Normally we'd meet you face to face, whether it be here at Worthing College or at Haywards Heath College, and we'd be able to meet you. Um, but obviously in this experience, I'm sure that we'll be able to give you all the information that you'll need to make the right choices for you um, coming to either college. If you do have any questions as we're going along, you'll see at the bottom, there's a chat. And on the chat, that's where you can put any questions if you've got anything that's technical issues. And we've got some people at um, from the marketing department and the IT department, and they're gonna be dealing with those. Also, as you go along, there's a Q&A at the bottom as well. Now, if you put any questions along there, whether it's to do with languages, French or Spanish, or travel and tourism, We've got at the beginning, we're going to have someone, um, Jemima from Haywards Heath, and she's going to be responding to any questions about modern foreign languages, French and Spanish. And then I'll be responding to some questions about travel and tourism at the end. And then we'll open up the question and answers as we, um, as we go along. But the main thing is, you know, we're here to help you and hope that you get um, as much information as you're, you're going to need to make those choices. So you're going to meet Raquel Rodriguez, who's our Spanish teacher, and Jemima Adele, who's the Spanish teacher at Haywards Heath. And Claire, Claire Pond, who we're lucky enough to have here at Worthing College and Haywards Heath as our French teacher. So um, the first person you're going to hear from is, um, is Raquel. Well, so yeah, just hi. to clarify, oh, sorry, Raquel, off you go, over to you. So next slide, please. Okay. So, hi, hello, my name is Raquel and the Spanish teacher in Worthing College. I'm going to tell you a bit more about um, our courses here and in Haywards Heath. So here in Hebrews Heath, we offer French and Spanish uh, A-level. They are both uh, a two-year um, two courses, um, as all the current A-levels, I believe. And so if we go to the next slide, please, uh, we'll tell you a bit more about what does um, to, to, to study a language in, in, in college. So um, as I just said, we offer French and Spanish in both sides. Um, uh, and you you you'll be assessed at this at, at the end of the second year, like in the current um, A level style. Um, so what do we study in French and Spanish? So I'm going to tell you all about the topics a bit, uh, you know, and insight about the topics. So the topics you'll study for both subjects are very similar. Uh, they are the same, uh, just depending on the on the country, of course. Uh, you will study uh, family and relationships, like how families are different these days, how were families in the past and how they're now, different types of families, relationships. And um, well, in GCC, probably you, you, you are studying now, you talk about your family, um, uh, how is your family, how was your family in the past? Now in A-level, you go a bit further and you study like, okay, how uh, family values are in, uh, you know, in Colombia, how does a family in France is different from a family in another uh, French speaking, a country, yeah, and how uh, in the past we have traditional families and now we have a different types of families. So we are looking at the topics a bit further than you do in GCC. And um, also we talk about cyberspace, that's the current one we're doing at the moment, internet, uh, what do we use um, uh, technology for, dangers of technology, advantages of technology, and um, I would say impact in our lives, do we use too much, too little, uh, everywhere. Uh, we also talk about um, the impact on, um, sorry, the impact of technology in our lives. We talk about uh, the, the uh, rise of, of minor group, minority groups, like 
how the role of women have changed over the years um, in, in the Spanish society, um, and rise of minorities, uh, rise of LGBT um, groups. In French, you also study about voluntary work um, in the French society, the role of charity organizations. Why does, do people, young people want to get involved in charities? Um, another topic we study is idols and the influence in young people. So it could be music idols and we can have sports idols and what work do they do outside, you know, the football pitch, for example. Yeah, if they do charity work, uh, how can they influence the life of young people? Um, music, cinema, in the French, French music, French cinema, I think that's quite a big topic in French. Um, in Spanish, we talk about different fiestas, uh, celebrations in Spain, in South America. We did the Day of the Dead the other day. Uh, we did, you know, the your Halloween. Uh, we did how we celebrate that in Mexico and how we celebrate it in Spain. So you're not just learning about uh, the language. We do that, obviously. We do our grammar, the vocabulary. We have to learn all that. But you're also learning about this, um, different cultures, which I think is very uh, exciting, really. So. Um, um, I believe this is exciting course. I think and the, and the students uh, do, do, do really appreciate learning about other cultures. Uh, you will be developing during the lessons and um, you will develop developing all the four language skills, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. Uh, and that happens uh, every lesson. Every lesson you have the chance to speak, you have listening, so you are translating, you are reading. So everybody takes part. Um, yeah, so next slide, please. Okay, so why is studying a language level? As I just mentioned, the, the topics are very up to date and we believe that they are quite appropriate for your age group. You, you all have something to say about technology. You all have something to say about idols, music. Um, you're all interested in what's going on in other countries, like uh, fiesta celebrations. So everybody gets very excited about La Tomatina, for example, for Spain. And they want to know about the film festival in Cannes. Um, so is is I think, it's, it's a good A-level. It's very highly regarded by universities. They know how hard it is to get a good grade in, in a language, but it's also very rewarding as because you are learning lots of things at the same time. And it's an excellent combination with various subjects. We are in wording and in Hayward you can have any combination of A-levels. Uh, you can do Spanish with music. You can do French with Spanish. Uh, we manage to, our timetable allows students that want to do AS French and AS Spanish so they can do Mm, both at the same time and the following year A2 and A2 Spanish and they, they don't class and um, they can do Spanish and PE uh, they do Spanish and geography anything works yeah um, also when you are uh, studying Spanish uh, and French uh, you are developing skills that are transferable to in the in the in the future or when you go to university you want employment you will be in presentations you learn how to uh, present yourself you learn, you learn how to uh, you will be resilient as well. You know how overcome this, oh, how hard it is. So you have to overcome these fears. Like, I'm going to say something wrong. No, well, you 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 do presentations with the class. You you learn how to give an opinion and how to listen to those opinions. Yeah, so, so that's very important. And the world of work, very important. Not many people have an A-level uh, in languages. Um, so that will make you different from the from the rest. So if you go to any job, it will make you really interesting, I suppose, and very valuable. Anything, even working in a theater or a cinema, you'll be the person that can maybe build with uh, someone coming from abroad and a company, a theater company coming from abroad, uh, and, and be the one the one talking to them. So a language is always very valuable anywhere you do. Um, you have contact with Spanish and French native speakers every every week. Our, your teachers, your speaking assistants that you see uh, in one to ones, and, um, and I think it's just uh, great actually just to, to have all these uh, all this contact. Um, you can see there that someone our previous students have really uh, found it uh, very interesting, as you can see there. Uh, they don't some of them just say they don't just study Spanish for language but it's a very great way to to learn and make it more involved in the global society uh, it's another student that 
uh, carry on the study languages in university. She did her third year abroad. She's, she went on holidays. She visited Cuba, no holidays, she went on a long uh, trip. Um, and she, she worked um, uh, in the times uh, that the summer before university in the travel section. So, you know, it's very interesting. So uh, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, apart from the topics uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, we also uh, study some cultural topics. Um, you will be studying in AES in the first year. You will be studying a film for Spanish and a film for French. The Spanish one is Volver, that is by Almodovar, it's a Spanish director. The second one is Lain. Um, the second one, sorry, the French one is Lain. And you will be studying this in the same way that you will be doing kind of um, film studies. Uh, you will be talking about the color in the films, the topics, the acting. I mean, it's is 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 quite it's, it's quite challenging, but very rewarding. Uh, and then the second year, we do books. We do La Casa de Bernard Alba, which is a play that we do for Spanish. We start in this week, and for French, uh, they are do, they are doing um, as I'm not very good at French as a secret, like um, a secret. Um, we write about it, we, we talk about it, we plan essays together in the class, and that's something the students really value in our late, latest student voice. That's one of the things they really like, planning essays as a group. Uh, I think it helps everybody, and we do that for both, for the film and for the book. Um, and that will be your paper three, uh, your exam number three, paper three, that will be an essay in the film and an essay in the book, that's in the second year. Okay, so next slide, please. Uh, the trips, okay. Uh, due to the current situation, as we all know, we're not being, we're not being able to offer a trip this year. Uh, we are hoping, and we are very positive, uh, that we'll be able to offer you a trip for a spring 2020, well, 21, 22, the following one, not this spring, hopefully, well, we hope we could, but I don't think we can. Uh, so we'll be, we'll be offering a trip for 2022. And, very exciting, very exciting because we are now joining in with Hayward Smith. So that will make us, uh, will be, the trees will be mm, more, um, I don't know how to say this, but more, um, more, the more the better, I'll put it that way. More people will join in the trip and, and it will be, um, they will go ahead, definitely will go ahead now. Uh, so in the past, we, we have taken students to um, Valencia for the Spanish trip, to Barcelona, to Madrid, to Malaga. Um, French students have gone to Paris, they've gone to Disney, uh, they, they've gone to Paris as a city. They, they've gone to uh, Nice in the past and to the south of France. Uh, so. We just hope that we can offer something like this uh, in 2022 for you. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, where could this course lead? Okay, many of our students, uh, after doing the A-level, uh, they go and carry on going to university. Um, we have students uh, that are currently in, in university in uh, studying languages. So for example, I, I, I have students from last year uh, they're studying Russian and Spanish in UCL in London, uh, marketing and international relations with Spanish in, in Exeter. Uh, I've got students doing psychology, nothing to do with Spanish, but Spanish made them get there. Uh, so in Chichester, um, law in Cambridge, uh, international relations in King's, uh, European studies with Spanish in King's College, uh, then uh, we, we've been sending students to very competitive universities, the same for French. Uh, we had one year, last year one girl decided to go to Paris for university. So she's studying, she, she's doing her whole degree in French. Um, so those language degrees are very well respected by employers and they give you a, a massive um, step forward, but um, you, you learn what you learn in communication skills and uh, when you can do this in another language, you can do that very well in your own language. So it's highly regarded. Uh, many of our students, students that I'm talking about, they're taking um, uh, a degree with a language, uh, they usually have a third year abroad. So that's, uh, as you can imagine, when you are 20, that's the best thing you can do. Just go for a year 
and Erasmus or a year abroad, uh, that's great. Also, uh, gap years, many students have gone a gap year, but uh, students that have spent a year um, in, in, in France in the, during the ski season. So uh, they spend the, the, the winter there. I've got uh, students that did Spanish and they spend, uh, they went to Costa Rica on a conservation um, trip and they spend part of the gap year there. Uh, and also, uh, if you want to go to uni, you can do anything with a language. You can do any course as, as you can read there. Music with the Spanish, philosophy with the Spanish, pure maths with the Spanish, uh, history with the Spanish, anything goes. Uh, so don't think, if you're not sure where to study, I don't think you have to go just yes for the route of, oh, I'm going to be a translator. I have to study pure uh, just languages. No, you can study anything with a language. Um, the opportunities are just endless. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, um, if in terms of careers, look at university, but also talking about careers, and the most obvious one is, is your passport to living and working abroad. Uh, we've got students working and living abroad at the moment. Uh, they, they keep in touch and, and they always say that it's thanks to, 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 to learning the language that they, we gave them the foundation here and then they carry on and they move. I just had a message from a previous student just today, and just randomly today. Uh, she is having a gap year this year because she wasn't very sure what she wanted to do and due to the current situation, she, she just w uh, waited. And, but she, she's hoping to go in January to work as an um, au pair in Spain. So that's a way to spend her, her gap year. Um, also, you can just do any career, journalism and management, uh, international management. We've got a girl that did French a couple of years ago and she's working for L'Oreal. Um, she did uh, business studies with French and she's just working for L'Oreal and she's doing really well. Uh, then of course you can have a language specific careers. You can be a translator and interpreter that are, they're, really, they're really always needed everywhere. Uh, you can be a teacher uh, you can work in the travel industry. Some of our students are actually a good couple doing travel and tourism building and, and it goes quite well. I mean, they, 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 they like the combination. Yeah, uh, and as also, as many students will tell you when they study, when they study a language, they open their mind much more. Uh, they, they get much more open-minded than, than, than before. They, they, they know, I don't know, they know, they know, another, they know about other cultures. Uh, they know uh, about how other people think, other opinions very different. When they watch the films, I know films you normally go and watch your films, uh, your friends here, they're very different. And it gets, is, is obviously, a great assets, asset to have in this competitive young market. Yeah. And, and the next slide now, uh, we are going to move on to Claire, who is going to talk about the facilities in Warning. Okay, so uh, hello, my name is Claire Ponte. I'm the French teacher at Worthing College in Hayward Seat College. So at Worthing College, we have two base rooms, one for Spanish and one for French. And at Hayward Seas, we have one base room where we do our lessons. So both Worthing and Hayward Seas have one uh, language lab with computers and headphones. Uh, this is where students usually have access to other resources, for example, videos or audio documents. Uh, so they really can work independently in this language lab. Half of the lesson time will take place in the, les in the le language lab. Uh, so it's a time when, again, we have access to more exciting resources, uh, some really brand new video clips or music sometimes as well. Um, also, we have a dedicated room for speaking sessions with your speaking assistant. Um, yeah, that's it. So for the speaking assist, uh, for the speaking session, it's going to be with your language assistant or your language teacher. Uh, next slide, please. About the student voice. So this is a, a video we have recorded. So feel free to watch it later. Um, 
So here at Haywood Seas College and Worthing College, uh, we want to know the students' opinion about their learning experience in our colleges. So they have to answer some questionnaire throughout the years, throughout the year, sorry. Uh, we also have class reps. Uh, every student, student has a voice. Like we, we really want to know how do they feel, how do they feel like they learn better. Um, and we take their feedback into consideration to offer them the best learning environment for, that we can. Um, the feedback we have received from previous students are very positive because they mention their progress, a friendly and supportive atmosphere and a great variety of resources. Next slide, please. Can I get the next slide? Thank you. Um, about enrichment, so at Hayward Heath and Worthing College, we offer some support sessions in Spanish and in French. So within these sessions, we get to revise what we've done in the lesson, we get to revise uh, student knowledge, and we can really explain more deeply what we have done in the lesson so that everyone has the same opportunity to learn and to practice. Um, we also have French and Spanish lunch about the speaking session that I was mentioning before. So these sessions are very valuable for the students because speaking is one of the big parts of learning a language uh, because obviously it's great to be able to use the grammar or to have some knowledge, but we think that it's very important to be able to speak a language. So in order to do that, we have one session a week, one session a week, it's 30 minutes. So you spend your session with a language assistant or your teacher, and you talk about uh, what you've done in the lesson, you, you learn more about examples and you really get a chance to be prepared to your speaking exam at the end of your A-level. Uh, every year we plan a trip to a theater in London to see uh, the Spanish play uh, that the students will learn in the lesson. So they go to the theater to see La Casa de Bernalda Alba. Uh, we also do a trip at the British Film Institute in London. So that's a study day and we learn more about cinema, French and Spanish cinema. So you learn uh, about the film in the lesson, as we say earlier, and then you can go to the British Film Institute to get more um, information about the cinema, the film, the actors. So it's really um, extending what you learn in the lesson. Uh, next slide, please. So here are some questions that are really important for the A-level languages. So if you want to get the chance to learn the language at Hayward Seas or Worthing College, you will need to get uh, a minimum of four in English language and maths. You will also need to get a six in the relevant language. So if you want to study Spanish, you're going to have to get a six at your GCSE Spanish. And then you're going to also need a minimum five GCSE grades uh, between four and nine. Is there a big gap from GCSE? Uh, yes, is, uh, there's a big gap, but just like every A-level course. So you will get the chance to have a transition from your GCSE to your, uh, to your A-level. And finally, uh, you're gonna have four hours of lesson per week languages, but then you're expected to work 
six hours outside of the classroom. So in these six hours, you're going to have to do your ISPs, which is work that you have to do independently in order to, to improve and to achieve your goals. Um, and then it can be uh, watching a movie in Spanish or in French, it can be reading article. It's really independent work and being able to learn by yourself and to get more and more example or knowledge that you can share in the lesson. So now I'm going to pass on to Lynn, who's going to talk about the travel and tourism course. So um, thank you, Claire, and thank you, Raquel. At the moment, we only offer travel and tourism at, um, at Worthing College. But um, obviously, if you bear with me for the travel and tourism, and we'll answer some questions at the end about all subjects. Really. So we offer two courses here at Worthing College for travel and tourism. We offer a level three course, which is the equivalent of an A-level, and that's two years. And at the end of that time, students come out with the equivalent of two A-levels. We also offer what we call a level two diploma in travel and tourism. And that's a one-year course, which is really successful. And that's the equivalent of four GCSEs. And that's for those students that don't quite get their five GCSEs, that they need to take a level three course. And they do that for a year. And if they progress well with us, they can go on and do a wide range of different um, level three courses. So next slide, please. So the level three diploma course, it's new to us this year. So the course has, has changed slightly, like a lot of people who offer this qualification around the country. And in the first year, the students actually cash in an A-level, which is fantastic because they can see their progress as they're going along. They know at the end of that first year what they've got. It gets banked and then they carry on for the second year. So over the two years, there's eight units in total. And I'm going to speak to you a little bit about them. In the first year, they are mainly um, internally assessed and externally assessed. And in the second year, they're mainly internally assessed. And by that, I mean, the students do the coursework, we mark it and send it off to the exam board. It's fantastic. I'm an examiner for travel and tourism for the old specifications. Kaylee, who also teaches travel and tourism, an examiner for geography. So we know exactly what students need to do to, um, to get the, the right grades. So next slide, please. So this is what our first year students are doing at the moment on that is called the extended certificate, the first year of the diploma course. So at the moment, Katie's teaching the unit one, which is the world of travel and tourism. And you can see the little star next to that, because that's actually an exam. So those students will be taking an exam in January. And each week, as Claire sort of alluded to, the fact they've got independent study. So each week they're learning definitions, they're doing little, little mini exams, questions. So by the time they do that exam in January, and they will have done a couple of past papers, they'll be so ready to sit that exam. Okay, so that's the first one. Um, the unit that I'm teaching at the moment is principles of marketing in travel and tourism. And I've just moved on to the students. We're actually looking at two visitor attractions, Fisher's Farm and um, the Sea Life Centre in Brighton. And we're looking at how they carry out their marketing and what makes it successful. And the second part of that assignment, they're gonna be producing a promotional campaign after carrying out some market research they're going to produce a promotional campaign for Fisher's Farm. It's going to be a Christmas campaign for them, so it's fantastic. And they're going to do all the promotional materials and they're going to plan it. Um, another opportunity, you can also see me do global destinations, finding out about destinations in the world, but that's also planning travel itineraries. And that's it's an exam, but it's actually like a timed one. It's a controlled condition. So we get a case study a couple of weeks beforehand. We look through it. We can always predict the questions and then the students have like a controlled assessment in the class. And I'm going to do visitor attractions with them as well. So you'll see there's four units, two are externally assessed and the two are coursework. In both of those, you'll get lots of support as you go along. So if like in marketing, each little mini task the students hand in to me and I'll give them lots of detailed feedback and then they can make changes. Okay, students who do travel and tourism course like the fact they get support and they can get feedback and then they can obviously submit the best work possible. So next slide, please. These are the units that we'll be doing in the second year again. You can see that there's some really lovely practical units on there as well. So I'll be doing customer service. Before I went into teaching, I used to be an overseas rep for um, First Choice, so part of the TUI group. We get students in there still to help us do some of these role plays and practical skills. So on customer service will be mystery shoppers. 
for more visit and attraction. We've, in the past, we've done the Sea Life Centre in Brighton and the Royal Pavilion. We've been mystery shoppers and they have to write a report up afterwards. And the second bit is where they're holiday reps and they're selling excursions and dealing with complaints and they're working their travel agent and they're selling holidays. So really practical. And we get ex-students in to help us out with those. We've got ex-cabin crew, ex-travel agents who come in and they do the role plays with them and they tell them exactly what to do. Um, we'll also do travel uh, tourism enterprises, which is they literally decide on what business they want to set up and they set up their own travel and tourism business. And that might be whether it's a tour operator, it might be in the past someone's done like an event, like a big travel event. So again, really practical. Current issues is when they choose their own current issues. This is the second year unit. It's like a mini dissertation, really. So it prepares them for going to university. And I'm assuming that lots of students who in this year will be looking at like the impact of like the present, you know, COVID situation on the travel and tourism industry or terrorism. And the unit I'm definitely going to teach, which is one of my favorites, is recruitment. So we look at all the different jobs you can do in the travel and tourism industry. You know, I've got students who are working all over the world, some still local, some are all over the country, some are all over the world. And we look at the jobs available and then they have to apply for a job. In the past, we've got them to either apply for cabin crew or a resort rep for Chewy. And again, we've brought students in who have actually done the interviews, who are doing those jobs. But they do the recruitment bit and then we ask them the questions. So again, you can see from that, they're very practical units. So it's not just the teachers doing the talking, the students are making notes. It's very much them doing it on their own or as a group. So the customer service one, they're doing role plays together. Okay, next slide, please. Now the level two travel and tourism course, some of the students who are taking that this year know that they wanna go and do different A-levels next year. So some are already saying, I wanna do criminology next year and I wanna do design. But again, they haven't quite got their five GCSEs. So this is a great grounding for those students. If they're successful on this course, they can pick the A-levels next year. Students who I did the travel and tourism course got great success on this which means students stay on the course and they achieve. Um, and there's a variety of different units on there. Again, very practical. There's a couple of exams on there, but they're multiple choice. Okay, so they're not formally written exams, but we've got like, you know, we've got five students this year who did level two in the advanced travel and tourism course. We've got some who've gone off to employment and some who are doing other A-level or B-tech subjects across the, um, the college. You can take maths and English alongside that as well. Okay, so next slide, please. When we talk about what's the highlights of being a travel and tourism student, I would always say it's their transferable skills. Now, sometimes students don't know what they want to do and who would at 16. So they'll take travel and tourism, which is worth two subjects, and they can pick one other subject alongside it. So, you know, not everybody necessarily wants to go into the travel and tourism industry or they might not go straight into it. So, you know, they're doing teamwork. They have to work together. Now, travel and tourism is eight hours a week because it's a double subject. So, you know, they are working together and they're doing research together and teamwork, but independent research. Um, so, you know, you'll have to find the information out yourself with a bit of help. IT, they're doing PowerPoint presentations for you at the moment, and they're doing flyers to sell their excursions. And, you know, they are going to have to stand up and do like presentations and things like that, which are amazing skills, whether you're going to go into any job or university. They do progress into employment and they do progress into higher education. At the moment, Kaylee and myself are supporting four of our travel and tourism students who definitely want to do a travel management course. There's one who wants to go into teaching. And she's doing travel and tourism in English language. and We're helping them with their personal statements and we're looking at what universities they might want to go to. And another girl who's wanting to go on and do um, a business management course. So they can go into both. And employment as well, we start looking at jobs together you know, when companies start recruiting, we'll do that together with them. And also we've got a fantastic link with Classic Collection and they do a degree apprenticeship as well. So we support students through that. Next slide, please. One of the students, well, one of the things we do offer for students is um, a week's work experience. Now we're hoping now we've postponed it this year till March when things sort of like, you know, obviously calm down more. But students, again, doing a week's work experience, we've had students, one of... Um, Raquel's students from last year did Spanish with us. She was actually Italian, she did travel and tourism. She did her placement at um, Amex in Brighton. And the fact that she could speak Spanish, she was Italian and did travel and tourism made her really employable. But we've had students who've gone to Classic Collection, tour operators, 
visitor attractions and things like that. So there's lots of great things. Links with employers, we get them in to do talks and things like that. So again, lots of links with airlines and tour operators. So students see it in like real life, which I think is really important. Next slide, please. I won't go through all of these, but we do lots of day trips. Okay, Thought Park, we'd normally go to Thought Park for Friday night, which is a nightmare for me, but students love it, but obviously it was a bit of a challenge. We have to go to trips and we have to get people in because assignments are based on organisations. Um, I know for visitor attractions, we're going to do RSPB and we're going to do the Sea Life Centre because students need to look at both, so that's great. I've been to Disney Resort Paris, no word of a lie, about 10 times. Okay, so it's normally in December time. It's a national conference. The students spend four days there, a day in Paris. It's a national one, it's great. Mallorca and Gran Canaria, we've done before. We've got them working as holiday reps. We've got them working as resort reps for the day with, with TUI. And as Raquel sort of said earlier on, I tend to do a Spanish trip with Raquel and we've done Malaga, Valencia, all over. Okay, so next slide, please. We've got three classrooms. It's a base room, there's laptops in there, there's computers in there, we've got iPads, things are set up, all of our resources in the room. So at the end of our corridor, it is travel and tourism basic. We've got an amazing, humongous map on the wall, and this is their base. We've got a little room where they do their role plays. So um, yeah, ideal opportunities for the travel and tourism students to, to, you know, to do their work. Next slide, please. I've sort of alluded to this, but where it can you know, lead you to, it can go direct into employment and students start off on doing one job and then they go, I've had students who've started off going to work in Disney in America for a year and then they've just not stopped. And then they're working on cruise ships and then they're working hotels in New Zealand. One of the lads is working for a really famous golf course in Scotland at the moment. He's in charge of the whole of front of house, Kanuski Golf Course, but we've got people who are working for airlines. So yes, you can do that. Um, other industries, sometimes students go into customer service or business related things, degree apprenticeships, which is a fantastic opportunity for students at the moment, as I said, higher education, but we also have students who do travel and tourism and go into other areas, whether that be teaching, law, business, dance, anything. And I've put on the bottom there about remember that those level two students who want to do that one year course can go on and do level three courses afterwards. Next slide, please. Um, this is going to be up, this is going to be recorded so you can have a look. I think the biggest things that students say is how much they enjoy the support from teachers, the fact they make friends because they've got eight hours together and they're doing teamwork and they're doing projects together. Um, and it's, and, you know, and it's, it's hard. It's a lot of work. It's lots of coursework outside of lessons, but they really enjoy that. But they like doing it at their own pace. OK, so they can go and do things here. We've got laptops at college that they can go and sit in the learning zone and do coursework. But um, yeah, it's practical, it's fun. They make lots and lots of friends as well. And they know that it helps them get jobs as well. Next slide. Just wanted to stress as well that the Travel and Tourism Level 3 course is worth two um, courses. You can, and so you do one other A level and it will be any subject you want to do. When we're doing the timetable, we make sure that students can pick what they, and we've moved blocks around at the last minute to accommodate students that want to do it. Okay, um, and Students who haven't quite got their maths and English, they could also take that as well. We don't require students to have their maths and English to do travel and tourism because they could be a committed student and love the subject, but not quite get their maths or not quite get their English. OK, so we'll look at that on an individual basis. OK, so next slide, please. I just wanted to open up the Q&A, if that's OK. I have been answering some questions as we've gone along. And I think um, we've got some questions here about there was one, I think it says, on the thing it says that it's been done, but I think Raquel alluded to it, and I'm going to pass it over to Raquel for a bit. Um, can you do French and Spanish? Yes, you can, because when I do the blocking, I make sure that students can do French and Spanish. And we've always had students that do both subjects as well. We've got two students this year that are doing French and Spanish. And we had a student last year who did French and Spanish who's gone off to a university. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to double check before I go on, before I pass it on to Raquel to ask questions to see if um, there's any other questions that are more to, to travel and tourism. So Raquel, can I open up for you to answer any of the other questions if that's yeah, okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I can open it. I've got it on my computer as well. All the open questions, yeah? Yep. So is A-level a big step from GCC? Well, 
yes, but any A level is a big step from GCC. It's not any higher, uh, and it's not any harder than any other level. Um, I suppose um, the challenge is just for every subject, but yeah, it's a big step, but it's not difficult. It's, well, it's not difficult, it's not impossible, but if you work hard, uh, you can get it. What grades we're looking at, as Claire mentioned earlier, uh, you will need, um, you need a, uh, um, a six in the relevant language. So you want to do Spanish, you need a six in Spanish or in French, and you also need maths and English. Uh, you need uh, five GCC, uh, five GCC grades from any 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 GCC combination, and two of those have to be English and maths. Yeah? Um, so if you if you really want to do Spanish or French, I would recommend you to start uh, practicing those listening, those reading, those speaking uh, in French and Spanish, so you can get that six. Yeah. Uh, so then the gap, the, the jump will be, won't be that as big as we think it is. Um, what enrichment? I think Claire mentioned it earlier. We do um, we do support uh, sessions uh, in, on top of your lessons. You have support sessions, half an hour support session, um, and uh, and that's timetable for, for the students that need to. And also is uh, we are very uh, approachable. So um, whenever you have a doubt or anything, you can come to the office and we can just have a little, a little chat with you and put you up to date with everything. All that, all that um, enrichment, uh, those day trips we do to uh, London in the, in the past, I've been to London and hopefully in the future as well, hopefully in the spring, we'll be able to go back to the theater to watch the Spanish play. We'll be able to go to the British uh, BFI just to, to do those study days that they're mentioned by to learn about the director you are you are you're studying the films you are doing so all those things we have them planned hopefully they will go ahead um, and when you come in 2021 um, fingers crossed everything will go back to normal so we can resume all that yeah and um, yes this um subjects in general uh, that's what i choose for a level impact your subjects i can choose a university um, for example, if you do a language, um, no, not really. Unless, obviously, if you want to study medicine, you should be studying some science and some, some topics, uh, some subjects related to, to that. Um, but um, no, no, no. If you study a language, um, you, you, you can do mainly anything apart from something extremely specific. You, if you only study languages, you can go and do maths. But uh, you, if you if you study languages and maths, you can do languages and maths. Yeah? I have a student that um, study languages, maths and, bio, um, and physics here, and um, went on to do law in Cambridge. So it's a very good combination. The universities value uh, diversity and they value that you do a language which is hard. So they know how hard it is to get that a or that B or that C even in Spanish and in French, um, so that you can do anything, mainly anything. Obviously, always check, uh, look at what degree you want to do if you're planning to do anything uh, and, and see if you need it. And uh, another of my students last year, she went off to, do, uh, to be an architect. So um, yeah, Spanish and French go with anything. Um, oh, could I just jump in there? Because yeah. unfortunately, I know people have probably got plans now. We are actually, we're sort of running over. I am answering some of the questions yeah. on the on the chat as we go along. Um, what we can do is um, we can do like a frequently asked question sheet that we will continue to answer these questions um, because we will sort of close the, the session down. I will do some more travel and tourism questions as we go along, but also you can contact the college as well. If you ask a travel and tourism or, or a languages specific question, it will come to me if it's travel and tourism and it will go to um, Jemima at Haywards Heath or Claire here or Raquel. So or it'll come to me and I'll pass it on to the right person. So deputy head of learning for this area, it will come to me and I will pass it on. So um, I'll answer this last one on travel and tourism. And then I think that's OK if we can agree, ladies, if we can answer questions. Afters. It also might give you the chance to actually think of any questions afterwards. It's one of those things, you know, when you think, oh, I wish I'd asked that. OK, so if you answer a question, it's got the information on there, it's got the contact details on there. It will come through to me and I'll make sure that your question gets um, answered by the right by the by the right person. OK. 
So thank you so much for spending time with us this evening. Like I said, it's a real shame that we can't speak to you face to face. We do, if the, you know, if things open up, we do always do in the summertime like a like a taster day for students, and that's when you can come in and hopefully we'll be in a position to be able to do that. Let's wait and see. But um, you know, please ask any other questions and we'll get back to you. Okay, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your evening. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you.